In this video, you're gonna learn three awesome hacks to make some simple cartoon animation in DaVinci Resolve. Let's do it. Here I am in the Fusion page of DaVinci Resolve. I'm just gonna go up to Workspace and uncheck Show Page Navigation just to give us a little bit of room. And let's start with a background. And I'll just take this background and drag it out here. And then let's make this kind of a light blue. There we go. And we're gonna animate a wiener cannon. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. By that, I mean a modified potato gun that shoots a wiener dog out of it. It doesn't shoot wiener dogs. This is, this is just, I'm just treading on the water here. <laughs> so let's go ahead and bring in some of our art. I'm just gonna drag this in here and hit one on the keyboard. This is our wiener dog art, and this was drawn in a vector art program. And you could certainly draw this in Fusion if you wanted to. But today we're just going to be working with some PNGs. Now, as we're getting into this, I'm going to be using a few different nodes. And if you're not familiar with nodes, you're somewhat new to Fusion, I would definitely recommend checking out the nine nodes workshop. It's available right there. Totally free. My gift to you. And it teaches you the nine nodes that you need to make almost anything in Fusion, including silly stuff like this. You're going to learn so many important concepts just with that one workshop. Definitely worth your time. There's also a link in the description. Let's uh, keep going. If you do want to draw some basic art in Fusion, here's a really simple way to do so. Let's draw the potato gun that we're going to shoot this dog out of. <laughs> There's good tips, I promise. <laughs> I promise. Let's just grab another background and we're going to make this kind of almost white. All right. I'm going to rename this and call this white BG and merge this over our back background like this. And then to create some art, you can think about making a background as just picking your color and then you can draw a shape in that color just using a mask. Now, there are other ways to do this, like with the shape nodes and everything, but this is, I think, just a really simple, easy way to draw some quick art. Just putting a polygon mask onto my white background here. And let's just go ahead and click and drag here and click and drag here. There we go. I'll hold control and grab this little handle here and we'll just kind of make something that looks like this. Okay, this is gonna be the barrel of the cannon. Maybe we want this a little bit smaller like that. And then any other color you want to add, you can just make another background. So let's make kind of a gray, maybe something like that. Merge this over and I'll add another polygon mask here. And let's just kind of make a, I don't know, like a, I don't know what you call it, like the base of a cannon, you know, <laughs> like this, the part that holds the cannon, you know, you know that that's a thing. All right. Okay. So this is kind of the, the cannon. <laughs> The cannon. In fact, let's just go full on just real looking cannon here. I can add another mask to my mask just by dragging it into it. That's going to add those masks together. And so let's have like a, I don't know, like a bigger back to it here. I can hit shift S to smooth out these different parts. We'll just kind of make this kind of a bigger back. And maybe I'll add a ellipse right here. Just make a little nub in here. That's like where the fuse goes, right? If you had a had a cannon, it doesn't really matter. Draw draw whatever you want, but you can make these shapes really easily just by masking a background. One thing I would recommend doing if you're not going to actually animate the shapes is anytime you have a polygon shape, right here where it says right click here for shape animation, I would right click there and say remove that animation. So this is called remove polygon three polyline like this and remove this one also like that. Okay, same for polygon two, right click, remove. That's gonna make it so it doesn't animate this over time if you change the shape and it's also gonna play back just a little better. So now we have our shapes and let's think about this kind of like a diagram. This is like the explainer video on how you put the wiener dog into the cannon and then shoot him out. So let's grab our wiener dog. <laughs> I'm a child. Let's take the... <laughs> <laughs> we'll take the output of this node and plug it into the... I can't do it. <laughs> My lunch is food coloring and beer. We're going to take the output of this node and put it over the output of our merge too. And that's going to put our little handsome man right there. And we're going to transform him. I'll hit shift space bar and type XF. And the first thing I'm going to do is flip him from left to right. And we can take the size down and change it so like... When he's flying out, it's gonna be something like that, right? Okay, so now we're gonna animate him going into the barrel. And so we're gonna start up here and I'm just going to, with our transform node selected, 
I'm going to animate center. And then a couple seconds later, I don't know, 30 some something frames later, we're just going to move this down so that he's in the barrel. So there we go. <laughs> Plunges him into the barrel, loading the dog, ready, ready to fire. <laughs> but we want him to change positions as he goes into the barrel. So let's say instead of him kind of in flying mode, we're gonna use this one, which is scrunched up mode, okay? Scrunched up dog mode. That brings me to tip number two. You can bring in multiple different poses of a character and you can switch out the art using a dissolve node. So check this out. So this is dog media in, let's call this a dog flying media in. And this one's gonna be dog scrunched media in. And if we bring this up here, let's see, I'll just bring this up in the right viewer. Let's just select this and I'll hit shift space bar and type dissolve and bring that into our second viewer. And so far nothing's happening. All we're doing is viewing the background and I can take the dog scrunched and bring it into the foreground. And now we see that we're switched to the foreground. And if we select this dissolve, we can fade in between these two poses. So that's a really nice way to swap out art without having to do a whole bunch of stuff. It's just one slider. And because this is going down the line into the transform, no matter what art we're using, it's going to still take that same animation. Okay. <laughs> we're going to start with him like here and right as his legs get in, <laughs> we're going to switch it out from background. And I'm just going to hit the right bracket on the keyboard just to go one frame to the right. And then we'll switch this instantly to the foreground. Okay, so now as he goes, he goes bloop. And that works so well. And you can do this with as many pieces of art as you want, kind of switch out art like that. We did a lot of this uh, when we were working with the cartoon. You can have different poses of a character, different hand poses or something, and you can switch them out with a dissolve. It's a great way to do it. So now we're switching that out like this. We're gonna take this animation and ease it. So I'm gonna go to the spline panel and here on the spline panel, there's these three dots, and I like to select show only selected tool because then I can select just the transform and I don't have a hundred other things to worry about animating. And I'm just going to hit control A to select all and then F to flatten these tangents here. So now put this in, shloop, oh, and he's loaded. He's ready to go. <laughs> and now we're gonna have him actually shoot out of the cannon. And before we do that, I'm going to do a little bit of prep here. I'm going to take everything that we've done so far, and I'm actually just going to hold shift and grab this background one. This is the blue background, this. And I'm going to put a black background here in the start and then take the alpha down. So all of this is happening over a clear background. You'll see why here in a minute. And then we're going to take all of that and merge that over our blue background. So it's kind of like grouping everything that we've done so far and then just putting it on a clear background and then putting all of that onto a blue background, okay? So it looks the same, but what's cool, if I take a transform node like this and put this after that merge that has all of our stuff in it, I can move this all around as one thing. So it's sort of like having a handle for that whole group, which is sort of like having a 2D camera, okay? This is a bonus tip. This isn't even my third tip yet. So we're gonna have him wait there for just a second and then we're gonna pop him out, <laughs> have him pop out starting at frame 80, and then he's gonna go shoom way out here, okay? So let's just see what this looks like. So he looks in there and then boom, he flies out, okay? Let's change that timing just a little bit. I'll grab this transform one. I'm gonna grab this second keyframe, just move it to the left a little bit, just so this happens a little bit faster. Boom, okay? And I'll flatten that first one and we'll just see. I'll flatten the second one too. So now he rockets out of that barrel. Let's follow him with our transform. That's kind of like our 2D camera. So we're gonna start here and right about when he leaves the barrel, we're gonna animate this center for our transform. Again, this is gonna move everything, all right? Which when there's no context in the background is essentially moving the camera, right? Even though it's kind of just moving stuff relative to the camera, it's the same, it's the same effect. It's a cheap way to do this. Let's see, we'll just start this at 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And then as he goes out into the wild blue yonder, we're gonna sort of follow him like this. Okay, see how that goes. Yeah, there we go. Let's take the spline panel, 
Control A, F. Yeah, so we follow him there. Now, so far, this is, uh, this is looking pretty sweet. But right here, we don't have any context. We don't really have any background or anything. So we don't know if he's still flying or what's happening. We just kind of have this blue background. So it would be cool if we had things kind of rushing past the camera. And so I want to show you a really cool trick to do this with particles. Here in this second section from the left, I can grab P emitter and P render, hook those together and take the P render and merge that over everything here. Let's just do that. We might move this around, but it doesn't really matter for now. And that emitter is going to make a bunch of particles inside of a circle. Let's take this emitter, go to region, and here where it says region sphere, let's go to region all. That's gonna put those particles everywhere. Now, what kind of particles should we make? And it, I mean, it's up to you, it can be anything. But I think what's cool is if we go to style, we can say style line and push up this size. Let's push it up to like four. So these are big lines like this. And let's play this back and see what this looks like. What this is doing is it's just putting a particle into a place and it's doing that with 10 particles per frame. So let's do like one particle per frame. So that's just adding particles, which is cool, but let's give them some velocity. Let's, let's push up some speed a little bit into this. So let's just push that up a little bit, see how that looks. So now they're kind of going this way. Let's make that a little faster. A little faster than that. Yeah, something like that. Put up a little variance. So some of them are slow and some of them are fast. It gives a little bit of parallax. Okay. And then let's adjust the angle. If we go to rotation, here under rotation mode, we can say rotation relative to motion. Boop, like that. And now these will actually kind of orient themselves with the direction. And so let's adjust this angle until everything's going kind of the same angle as our dog. And now look at this. Oh, baby. Now it looks like he's rocketing through the sky. Oh, God. Maybe push up that velocity just a little bit. So now we have him whoosh, like that. So now we have a little bit more of this kind of speed idea. And let's only do this once he starts going. And so right about here, we want there to be full particles. So let's just keep this number at one here. And then back before he flies, like right as he starts flying, let's take the number all the way down to zero. So that's gonna just start making particles as he comes out of the barrel. <sighs> yes, <laughs> so cool. Uh, okay, let's switch him out as he leaves the barrel too. Let's switch him back out. Okay. So now he's back into flying mode. <laughs> Pops out, he's so happy. So now we have this animation <laughs> of him flying through the, flying through the air. <laughs> And so you can add a little bit of those kind of speed lines just with particles, pretty cool. Let's take these particles and actually put them behind the dog so we can really take all of this. We'll just put this right here. I can kind of organize these, hold shift and drag this out and then drag it earlier in that flow. That's gonna put those particles behind him. Here we go, shloop. <laughs> All right, you guys want one one more bonus tip? This is so easy and it's so fun. Okay, one more bonus tip. Let's put this right on the dog. We're gonna make him wink, all right? I'm gonna show you how to make a dog wink. This is really easy. You know, there's no animation skills required. This is the cheapest trick, okay? So here's, here's his eye, and we're gonna make this just close for like a couple frames. We're gonna do that using a merge node. We'll just put this merge node after our dissolve and I'll hit two on the keyboard so that we're loading this in the viewer. And then I'm gonna take a background node and I'm gonna pick the same color as his face for our background. So we'll call this a gray BG and plug that into the foreground. That's going to fill this up, but I'm gonna draw a mask and plug that into that background. And then I'm just gonna draw a shape that's almost over his entire eye like this, okay? So it looks really weird right now. And we're just gonna keep a little bit of this slit just so it still looks like he has an eye. It's just closed, right? Looks really weird right now. But then we just take this merge and just kind of like we did with the dissolve, we're just gonna animate this real quick over one frame. So as he's flying, we're gonna take this blend. Most of the time it's gonna be off, but then one frame later, we're gonna turn it on 
for one, two, three frames or so, have it on, and then next frame, turn it off. So it's fully off, and then it instantly goes to fully on for three frames, and then it goes fully off again. So we have this little bloop. <laughs> Let's see how it looks in the final comp here. Okay, we're loading our dog, getting him going. Whoosh. Bink. <laughs> so happy. This makes me so happy, you guys. I love making foolish stuff like this, and it's so easy to do in Fusion too. So there's three tips. You can make some cheap art using masks and backgrounds. You can switch out existing art with that dissolve effect. You can add those easy motion lines with the particles. And oh boy, you can make some really foolish stuff. <laughs> Hey, if you want to get into using Fusion, there is a workshop that I put on called the nine nodes that you need to make almost anything in Fusion. And you can get it for free right now, right here. And I would definitely recommend checking that out if you're new-ish to Fusion, all right? If you're new here, my name is Casey and I teach Fusion and I would love to teach you Fusion. If you use DaVinci Resolve, you want to make cool stuff like this, you want to make wiener dogs flying into space, well, this is the time. This is your, the time is now, kids. It's ripe for picking. <laughs>